Hi guys, it's Ben here and Liverpool have come so far. We have come so far in this transfer window as fans. We've been making videos, we've been talking in the comments, we've been doing all sorts. It's gonna come down to this. It's finally coming down to these last 48 hours. Is Philip Coutinho gonna leave? Are we going to sign Virgil van Dijk? We still don't know the answer to these questions. I thought we might have known by now, we don't. Thomas Lamar is still in the mix. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is still <laughs> An Arsenal player, is he going to go to Chelsea? Mamadou Sacco still a red, where's he going to end up? There's so many questions unanswered. We've got 48 hours left of the transfer window. Today has been another absolutely crazy day. I can't believe it was this morning that we announced Naby Keita as a Liverpool player, obviously from next season. It was today that we were following Virgil van Dijk on apparent planes, <laughs> following cars around, uh, putting pictures on social media of, of cars that we thought Mohamed Salah's vlog featured, the same number plate and stuff like that. This is just Liverpool Twitter, this is just Liverpool social, this is just Liverpool fans being themselves. We're just so obsessed with signings, we've been obsessed with Van Dijk ever since sort of May, June time. It's still the case now. There's still no certainty either way as to where any of these players are going to end up. Every refresh on Twitter, I mean I'm looking at Twitter now, every refresh is coming up with something new. I'm looking at Chris Bascom saying Liverpool want to spend £140 million before Thursday night. I'm looking at the Daily Mail and uh, Dominic King saying Liverpool need to Sign Lamar, they're trying hard to complete a £74 million uh, deal for him. He's in the France squad to play on Thursday, so that gives us even less time. So by the time I talk to you tomorrow night, he may be a Liverpool player or the deal may be off. Meanwhile, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain apparently wants to go to Liverpool because he thinks they're going to play him in midfield, but Chelsea are in a rush to get that deal done. However, if he was to join the Blues, the Premier League champions, uh, which is a surprise he doesn't want to go there. I mean, if I was him, he gets to stay in London. He's going to be on apparently 220 grand a week, having turned down 180 grand a week at Arsenal. Are Liverpool really going to pay him anywhere near that fee? I mean, he would become our highest paid player at a canter and he wouldn't really be anywhere near our first team. He seemed to think he's had, you know, would get more of a chance of playing in centre mid at Liverpool. Would he? I mean, we've got Henderson, Van Aldem, Lallana when he's fit. Coutinho, if he stays, we'll get onto that. Um, you know, Van Aldem and Chan were superb at the weekend. If you've got Grudic in there too, uh, in reserve, obviously he'd probably come in above him unpacking order, but I'm just surprised that that deal for him against Chelsea is taking so long. He obviously is still hoping that, you know, Liverpool might not get Lamar. They might end up having to go back in for him. So if, if Klopp wants to spend 140 to 150 million before the window's out, surely we can press on with the Van Dijk deal. I'm just looking at the odds and it's one to six that he joins Liverpool. This is the sort of odds we were seeing back in sort of June time before we messed up. This is the sort of odds that it went back to after a while, um, about a month or so ago, I think he became this sort of odds again. Uh, Thomas Lamar, one to two to join Liverpool. So, you know, both Van Dijk and Lamar are both likely to be Liverpool players by this time on Thursday. I mean, what a coup that would be. Those would be two absolute mega signings. I mean, right from under Arsenal's nose, Thomas Lamar and Chelsea, Arsenal and City obviously interested in Van Dijk. Even Barcelona and Juventus apparently have been keen on him. So to, to, to really solidify ourselves as a title challenger, we would need both those players. And I think we would need Coutinho to stay too. I think if all those three things go our way, forget oxlade chamberlain then I don't think he's that important. Um, unless we lose Coutinho, maybe we'll bring in him as well. But if we can just keep Coutinho, um, and that obviously goes against what Anfield HQ ran with today, uh, an exclusive on their website, which I'll, uh, I'll get up. And they're saying that a 160 million euros deal is in place for Coutinho to leave Liverpool, go to Barcelona, but only if Liverpool sign his replacement. So it says, they've remained firm on their stance to keep Coutinho despite re receiving three bids from Barcelona this summer, but the club are now ready to accept 160 million euros, which is 149 million pounds from the Brazilian. So this is obviously Anfield HQ. It's their word against the journalists. It seems Chris Bascom, uh, is still remaining adamant that he will not be sold. The club stance has not changed. I think James Pearce said that in his article tonight too. Uh, and Chris Bascom even went as far as saying that people on Twitter don't seem to understand the word definitive, which is exactly what he says Liverpool have been in their denial of the rumours that Coutinho would be sold. Coutinho is out you know, with the Brazil squad at the moment. Apparently he's been dropped from their first team because he's played no competitive football. I mean, he's not a popular figure on Twitter at the moment, Philippe Coutinho. I think it's very safe to say that. Um, I'm, I'm just having another scroll through Twitter now because it's been one of those days where every single refresh, same with uh, same with yesterday, um, is, is coming up something new. So now I'm seeing Chris Bascom saying that Southampton could decide to do business with someone else, not Liverpool. So maybe Chelsea will come back in. Arsenal still keen. They're obviously desperate for a centre-back, especially if they sell or loan out Mustafi and uh, 
some other defenders also linked with moves out. I mean, Arsenal are just in disarray. I've seen today, of course, that Alexis Sanchez is the subject of a bid for Man City. Uh, Arsenal want Raheem Sterling. The, the, the initial report from John Cross this morning was that uh, it was going to be Sterling plus cash for Sanchez. Now it looks like if Arsenal are going to get Raheem Sterling, they're going to have to pay Sanchez plus cash to get him. They'd rather have Aguero. I've seen Fabian Delph linked with Arsenal today. So, uh, and not to mention Johnny Evans. I mean, I live with an Arsenal fan. He's far from happy. Uh, I work with quite a few as well. So, I mean, it's just another mental day. And I mean, I can't say anything definitive. I can't really give any predictions. It looks like Van Dijk is close. I mean, Graham Kelly is, you know, you, you can, uh, you can say what you want about Graham Kelly and whether you believe him or whether you think he's making things up. He thinks today has not been a quiet day. I mean, on the face of it, in terms of concrete news from, from your Bascoms, your Reddies, your Pierces, uh, or your Joyces, you haven't really seen much from Liverpool, uh, apart from maybe the uh, Thomas Lamar stuff, which Melissa Reddy said earlier today, that we are trying to thrash out a £75 million deal for him. Negotiations aren't going to be easy, and especially if he's going to play on Thursday, we're going to have to get things wrapped up pretty quickly. I mean, I mean, imagine by the time we wake up tomorrow or by lunchtime, we may well know the situation with uh, Thomas Lamar, so really fingers crossed that we managed to get that one done. But. Um, who knows what's been going on with Van Dijk, I mean, apparently it wasn't him in the vehicle today that people were following, I can't believe I just said that, people were following a car that they thought Van Dijk might have been in, people were replying to the tweet saying, don't you dare lose him, they were chucking jets, everything has been going on today, it's just been an absolutely mental one, and I, I can only see things getting even more mental in the next 48 hours, but as it stands, Coutinho is still a Liverpool player, Van Dijk and Lamar are still targets, those deals are still on the table, Southampton still don't want to deal with us, Monaco seemingly don't want to sell, but they have signed Keita Boulder Jiao, someone in Lamar's position, someone we were actually linked with earlier this summer, has just joined Monaco today, and they really wrapped that up quite quickly, which suggests, which suggests to me that it was quite a last minute call. So, has that signing paved the way for Thomas Lamar to join Liverpool? And will Thomas Lamar joining Liverpool pave the way for Philippe Coutinho to join Barcelona? I don't think we can afford to sell him. I don't think we can afford to do that this summer. I still think, even with Lamar in, he's too good. Let's not forget how good a player he is. I know we beat Arsenal 4 0 at the weekend. I know Sadio Mane is absolutely unplayable. I know Salah is awesome. I know Firmino is going to be absolutely fantastic for us. But imagine Philippe Coutinho in this squad, as well as Lamar with Van Dijk in there as well. That is a title contender right there. I'm not sure if you take Coutinho out that we are a title contender, especially with Lallana injured until October or maybe even beyond, perhaps going in towards Christmas. What an exciting 48 hours we have ahead. I'm nervous. Um, I think the most likely outcome now, uh, well, if you look at the odds, if you look at what's most likely with the bookies uh, in terms of each individual deal, if you just look at Lamar, Van Dijk and uh, Coutinho. I'm not going to include Oxlade Chamberlain. I don't think we'll go in for him unless something goes wrong with uh, one of the others. Van Dijk will sign, Lamar will sign, Coutinho will leave. That is what the bookies think. Uh, some are more likely than others. Obviously, Van Dijk is one to six, whereas the other two are quite close. But if you offered me now Van Dijk in, Lamar in, and Coutinho out, I would say yes. Um, I don't want Coutinho to leave and earlier this summer I said there's very few scenarios where I would let him go. The way things have transpired though and the way that we can get Thomas Lamar in who's a lot younger, he's got a high ceiling obviously, maybe not as high as Coutinho's but I don't think we're going to be able to get as good a replacement for Coutinho as Thomas Lamar another time so I just wanted to box that one off now and then we're all set. Coutinho's off, everyone at the club will be happy, Van Dijk will be in, Cater to come in next year. That's so much optimism, so much to look forward to. Coutinho staying on would really make us title contenders. But if we can't compete for the title this year, which I still think we can, even with just Lamar and Van Dijk and no Coutinho, uh, then we certainly can next year when Naby Keita is going to be wearing that number eight jersey. What a day today has been. What a day I'm sure tomorrow is going to be. And what a window this will have been either way. I mean, it's been absolutely frantic. James Pearce tweeted earlier that he's not enjoyed it one bit. He can't wait for it to be over. I think we're all the same. I can't wait to find out our squad uh, on Thursday. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think the situation is going to be with Van Dijk, Lamar, Coutinho and Oxlade Chamberlain if you want. If you think we'll get him as well, do let me know. Anyone else you think we might sign, if we sell Coutinho, maybe even target someone in addition to Lamar. Who knows, maybe Oxlade Chamberlain, maybe someone else, maybe back in for Draxler or Fernando Sanchez who apparently we've ended our interest in. So much to talk about, so much to look forward to. All I can do is get off this camera, 
and go to bed and wait for tomorrow and see what's see what's on my timeline when I refresh it in the morning. It's so exciting. I hope I've been able to convey all your thoughts into this video as well. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Please do subscribe to my channel for more of this sort of stuff. Obviously, so much more to talk about as we close in on the end of the transfer window. Drop a like, share the video for me, and follow my other socials, if they might say, on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. I'll see you next time. Up the Reds.